Good afternoon, my name is Ralph Friedrichs, and welcome to Take Your Life Back. Today we're going to jump right into a uh, topic that's a very sad topic. Uh, uh, it's uh, just about as sad as yesterday's copy uh, topic, if not uh, a more sadder issue at hand here. And that is fetal alcohol spectrum disorder, otherwise known as FASD. Now, what this is really about is uh, that there are mothers during their pregnancy that consume alcohol and or drugs and that cause major defects to the unborn child. Um, I just want to say this and, and we'll jump right into this. And if there are any mothers out there that are presently consuming alcohol and or drugs, shame on you. I hope to God that this segment hits some sort of nerve on you to quit consuming alcohol and or drugs. I like for you to quit during your pregnancy and also after your pregnancy, but for this topic and for this reason right now, let's just say, can we stop doing uh, drinking your alcohol and doing your drugs during your pregnancy? Because it is very irresponsible, it's a very selfish act, and I can guarantee you that you folks, you mothers that are pregnant out there can go nine months without it. It is my hope that as you continually watch my videos, uh, future videos and past videos, that maybe you'll quit totally. You'll cease doing alcohol and or drugs, but for the pregnancy, it is absolutely dangerous to do it. You are affecting the unborn child, and you will know why as I discuss this. So I'm going to go into this right now, and let's uh, go into what is FASD. It is an umbrella term describing the range of effects that occur in an individual whose mother drank alcohol, possibly even did drugs during pregnancy. These effects may include physical, mental, behavioral, and learning disabilities with possible lifelong implications. Folks, do you really need to have that beer? Do you really need to have that scotch or do whatever else you do, mommy, or mommy to be? Cease it because you're hurting your unborn child. Let's get back to it. The term FASD is not intended to use as a clinical diagnosis. An individual would not receive a diagnosis of FASD. Diagnosis like FAS, partial FAS, and ARND fall under the umbrella of FASD. Each year, as many as 40,000 babies are born with FASD. That means there are 40,000 possible mothers that are irresponsible each year. Are you one of them? Costing the nation about $4 billion, but who cares about the money? I don't mean to be so blank, but who cares about the money? What about the effect on these poor children? What about their future, their life that was so selfishly taken away by a mother who had to consume alcohol and or drugs? Shame on you, mommy to be. Fetal alcohol syndrome, which is FAS, and that's not the disorders, is a birth defect syndrome caused by maternal alcohol consumption during pregnancy. FAS is characterized by growth deficiency, height or weight in the 10th percentile, a unique cluster of minor fa uh, facial anomal anom anomalies, small eyes, smooth upper lip. I'm sorry, I couldn't pronounce that word properly central nervous system damage, structural, neurological, and functional impairment, and parental alcohol exposure. Now that falls under FAS, not FASD. That's just a branch of FASD. Symptoms of FASD uh, is defined, and, and I'll explain what the Mayo Clinic is saying. It. The symptoms of fetal alcohol spectrum disorders can include facial anomalies and growth deficiencies. Skeletal deformities, organ deformities, central nervous system handicaps, and behavioral problems for a late life. For in the later life, a lot of these things will show up. Here are some symptoms which can occur to children with paternal exposure to alcohol. Uh, when I say paternal, I meant to say prenatal exposure to alcohol. It's very hard for me to speak to the camera and read this at the same time. I wish I was. Uh, I had a memory that I can memorize this, so bear with me. Uh, there is good intentions. Sometimes I will mispronounce a word. But let's get back right to it. Facial uh, uh, handicap features are small head, 
small eye openings, webbing between eyes and uh, base of nose. Think about that. What you're doing when you're drinking is you're making your child possibly look like they have the features of a duck. And I don't mean to be funny about this, but think about what I'm explaining. Webbing between uh, the um, uh, the eyes and the base of the nose, webbing. That that's absolutely that, that, it's ridiculous. I, I can't even imagine. Drooping eyelids, failure of eyes to move in the same direction, short upturned nose. Think about that. Do you want your child to look that way? Let's continue. Flattened cheekbones, sunkle nasal bridge, flat or absent groove between nose and upper lip, smooth and thin upper lip, opening in the roof of the mouth. Small upper jaw, low set or malformed ears. These are all the facial things alone. We haven't even gone into the growth, the skeletal, the central nervous system. These are just facial, small head, small eyes, webbing between eyes and base of nose, drooping eyelids, failure of eyes to move in the same direction. They're moving in separate directions. Short upturned nose, flattened cheekbones, sunken nasal bridge, flat or absent groove between the nose and the upper lip, smooth and thinner upper lip, opening in the roof of the mouth. Folks, some small upper jaw, low set malformed ears. Unbelievable what I just went through, and that's just one quarter of the total handicap aspects of, of FASD, folks. So let's go into growth deficiencies. Small body size and weight. Remember we talked, uh, mentioned the 10th percentile. Slower than normal physical development. The maturity will take longer. Failure to catch up in growth. Unbelievable. And, and, and it's, it's so easily preventable, folks. It's so easy. And, you know, I keep saying, folks, I'm just going to address this not to folks, but to mommy to bees. It's preventable. Stop consuming alcohol. Stop doing drugs. Stop totally. But if you cannot do that, at least be generous enough. Give your baby a fair chance in life to stop during your pregnancy. Put the beer down. Put the whiskey down. Put any drugs down. God has given you a gift. All you need to do from this gift of God that he created is to carry it responsibly for nine months. Can you do that? I hope so. Skeletal deformities include deformed ribs and sternum, curved spine, curved in chest wall. Now the curved spine probably explains the shortness, the 10th percentile. Bent fuse, webbing or missing fingers or toes. Webbing. Remember the duck that I explained? Think about that. Extra fingers. Your child might be born with 11 or 12 fingers, not 10. Besides the physical handicap, can you imagine what the mental abuse this child's going to face by going into the world, going to school? Abnormal palm creases, genital malfunctions, kidney or urinary defects. Folks, this is absolutely disgusting. When I say disgusting, it's disgusting that there are mothers that are out there that are so irresponsible to, to let something like this happen. They need to have their fix for today to ruin a child that hasn't even been born tomorrow. A sober today makes a better tomorrow, folks. Or ladies, mommies to be. Let's continue. Now we're going to go into the central nervous system handicaps. Small brain size. Faulty arrangement of brain cells and tissues. Mild to severe mental retardation, learning disabilities, poor memory, lack of imagination or curiosity, poor language skills, poor problem solving skills, poor con conditioning. I'm hesitating because it's sad to read this to you folks. Irritability in infancy, hyperactive activity in childhood, poor reasoning and judgment skill, sleep and sucking disturbance in, in infancy. Folks, these are the nervous system handicaps. 
we have facial so far, we have growth, we have skeletal, and now nervous. And we still have another one, and that's, these are behavioral problems, inability to concentrate, social withdrawal. Well, think about it. How could this child that's going to be born, probably with any of these, have a social life like you and I? How? You are taking away 50% of its future, at least, because you had to have alcohol and you had to do drugs during pregnancy. Put it on hold for nine months. You might come out to even be a sober person after that. So not only are you helping your child and you're giving your child the chance it deserves that God has created for it to have a good normal life, you're also helping yourself. Let's go to uh, the next one. Social withdrawal. I believe I said that. Stubbornness. Impulsiveness. Anxiety. A lot of these are already instilled had an addicted, alcoholic, and uh, drug uh, addicted person. They are ready. These are the signs that they have because they're being passed on. Mommy who's addicted to drugs and alcohol is passing on her addiction to an unborn child, a creation of God. That's what they're doing. Criminal behavior, chronic unemployment, incomplete education, inappropriate sexual behavior, substance abuse problems, poor parenting skills. The list goes on and on. It doesn't stop. I stopped it at this point. Because I can only say so much about this. I should only have to mention it a couple of times for mommy-to-be to have it sink into you. And I'm usually calm when we talk, but this is a subject equal, if not more important, than yesterday's, which was domestic violence and addiction. How they go hand-in-hand hand together and here now motherhood and addiction go hand in hand again because no matter what you're going to be a mother but you are not giving your child a fair chance at life that child cannot stop your alcohol coming through I believe from how I understand that when you drink alcohol it goes into the placenta so that child has no choice but to accept Children are born with an instinct to trust you, to look up to you. You, in your own mind, already eliminated that. Your child won't know that because they're at an infancy stage and they are too young to understand that. But you have already taken that trust away from yourself because you know what you did and you know what you're doing right now. Help for children with FASD. The above symptoms and conditions can have a lifelong implication for children who are exposed to alcohol in the womb. However, there is help for even those with the most severely affected by their mother's drinking. Sure, there's help, but the, the children already have some of these deformities because of you. We can eliminate the help by eliminating the alcohol and the drugs. How about that? Research has shown that FASD children who receive special education and adequate social services are more likely to reach their development and educational potential than those who do not receive those services. If you're a mother and it's too late because you've already consumed that alcohol and those drugs and you're giving birth maybe in about a month from now, here is what you need to do at this point because we can't go back and we've stressed this over and over again in most of my videos you cannot go back we need to live for today and for tomorrow today you stop your alcohol today you stop your drugs tomorrow you stop yesterday if you did it it's done we need to move on research has shown that FASD children who receive special education and adequate Social services are more likely to reach their developmental and educational potential than those who do not receive those services. A loving, nurturing, and stable home life without disruptions, harmful relationships, or transient lifestyles has also been shown to benefit children with fetal alcohol spectrum disorder, FASD. Those who live in abusive, unstable, or violent environments are more likely to develop later behavioral problems. 
So if you've already created this situation, and it might be too late at this point, at least give your child a loving, nurturing, stable home life without disruptions or harmful relationships. If yesterday's video uh, has anything to do with today's video and you are going through a domestic abuse, learn from that. Benefit from that. If you live in an abusive relationship, get out. If not just for you, but for your child, you've already taken something away from your child. Because you had to drink and you had to do drugs. Get rid of the unstable, violent environment that you might be living under. You will likely have a better chance of having this child develop a, small, a, a normal life by doing that. So as usual, I'm going to recap. And then, unfortunately, I need to move on because I am so stressed out from knowing that there are mothers-to-be that are out there that are actually doing stuff like this. And if you're a mother-to-be and you're watching me right now, don't be selfish. Put down the alcohol. Put down the drugs. Whatever is in your system is there. We need to move on. But you can stop right now, today, August 10th, 2014. If you still have two, three months left before giving birth, you might have six, you might have eight. But it's never too late to stop. And when I say it's never too late, because the more you do, the more you have a chance of uh, having FASD. If you're seven months in already and you've done it all along, there is nothing we can do at this point. But what you can do is come up with an action plan like we talk about all the time. And part of that action plan is to supply a loving, nurturing, stable home life for your child without disruptions, harmful relationships, or transient lifestyles. Get rid of it all now. You are already taken away something from your child. Now give something back to your child. Let's recap now. We're going to go over this real quick. We're into 17 minutes. I'm going to try to recap all within five minutes. Okay, folks? So let's get right back into it. What is FASD? Can anyone tell me? FASD is called Fetal Alcohol Spectrum Disorders. It is an umbrella term describing the range of effects that it can occur during an individual whose mother drank alcohol during um, pregnancy. So it's more the alcohol that we're talking about. Of course, believe me, if you're doing drugs and or alcohol, it's going to harm your child no matter what. But this, for all intents and purposes, is more about the alcohol. These effects may include physical, mental, behavior, learning disabilities with possible lifelong implications. You are taken away from your child for its lifetime, his, him or her's lifetime. Under FASD, there also lies FAS and ARND. What is FAS? Fetal alcohol syndrome is a birth defect syndrome caused by maternal alcohol consumption during pregnancy. It has symptoms like growth deficiencies, height up in the 10th uh, percentile, a unique cluster of minor facial uh, markings of handicap signs, small eyes, small and upper lip, central nervous system damage, structural neurological functional impairment, and prenatal alcohol exposure. These are the things that cause the FAS so, and, and, and the signs of it. These are symptoms of FASD, and it's a long list, and there are one, two, four, or five categories. So let's go to category number one. And I say this with a sad, sad heart that I have to read this back to you. But as much as it's sad for me, it's important for you to listen. It's important for you to hear. And I am, via my videos, the messenger to give you the information that you need to know how to prevent things how to succeed in things and how to move forward in things and when I say in things it has everything to do with alcohol and or drug addiction although the title of this isn't anything but FASD it involves alcohol here are the uh, uh, facial handicap signs small head small eye openings webbing between eyes and face and nose drooping eyelids Failure of the eyes to move the same direction. There's no coordination. Short upturned nose. 
flattened cheekbones, sunken nasal bridge, flat or absent group between nose and upper lip, smooth and thin upper lip, opening in the roof of the mouth. Folks, mommies to be, small upper jaw, low set or malformed ears. Those are just facial. Let's go into the next one, growth deficiencies. Small body size and weight. Slower than normal physical development. Goes back to the 10 percentile. Failure to catch up in growth, folks. That was just the growth. Now we have the skeletal deformities. Deformed ribs and sternum. Curved spine. Caved in chest wall. Bent fused web missing fingers or toes. Extra fingers. Mommies. Put the beer down, put the alcohol down. Do you want your child to have extra fingers or any of these that we just talked about? By giving your child any of these, you're already taken away from its future sociable life, which we'll address in a minute. Abnormal palm creases, general deformities, kidney and urinary defects. That was that subject. Central nervous system handicaps. Another long list. Small brain size. Faulty arrangement of brain cells and tissue. Mild to severe mental retardation. Or as I choose to call physically challenged. I mean mentally challenged. Well in this case you're going to have physically and mentally challenged baby. Continue drinking your alcohol and this is what you're going to get. If you stop today you might save some. You might save all. You can't change yesterday. Let's go back. Learning disabilities. Poor memory. Lack of imagination or curiosity. Poor language skills. Poor problem solving skills. Short attention span. Poor coordination. Hyperactivity in childhood. Poor reasoning and judgment skills. Sleep and sucking disturbances in infancy. Last and definitely not least, behavioral problems. Inability to concentrate. Social withdrawal. How do you think you would feel if you had to go out to, to church and you had to go to the mall and you had to go wherever you have to go and you have extra fingers? Mentally challenged, physically. How would you feel? How do you think your social life would be? I bet you it's good now. But how do you think it would, would, would have been if your mom would have drank during her pregnancy? Because she didn't. You are the way you are. But because you are going to consume that alcohol, possibly even have drugs, you are going to create this. You are going to create FASD. Criminal behavior. Chronic unemployment. Incomplete education. Inappropriate sexual behavior. Substance abuse problems. Poor parenting skills. Substance abuse problems. You are directly giving your disease through your throat drinking into your placenta to your child. That's what you're doing. Let's read the last paragraph and then we'll continue. Help for children with FASD. The above symptoms and conditions can have a lifelong implication for children who are exposed to alcohol in the womb. However, there is help for even those with the most severely affected by their mother's drinking. It doesn't mean that you're allowed to drink because, however, it can be helped. There is no however. For argument's sake, there is an however in front of me on paper. However, I'm telling you that there is no second chances at this. Once you consume that alcohol and you do the drugs, you are passing on a disease. And these are the effects the facial, the growth, the skeletal, the central nervous, the behavioral problems, these are all given by you and your irresponsibility. Research, research has shown that FASD children who receive special education and adequate social services are more likely to reach their developmental and educational potential. Potential. That's the key word. Not their ability, but their potential. Their ability would have been if you would have not had the alcohol and not had the drugs and let God, what God put into your womb, that baby would have been born 
with a fresh start, with a new life, and, and would have had no setbacks. There are enough setbacks in life already that this child is going to face. The world is rough. Why should you expedite this by having irresponsible behavior, unacceptable behavior, a loving, nurturing home, stable home life, without disruptions, harmful relationship, or transient lifestyles, has also been shown to benefit children with fetal alcohol spectrum disorders. Those who live in an abusive, unstable, or violent environment are more likely to develop later behavioral problems. Now that you have already possibly done all the drinking that you could have done to hurt this child, so we can't go back. When the child is born, at least give it a good home. Give him or her a good home. If there are any interruptions in your home, such as domestic violence, stop it now. Any violent environment, stop it now. Abusive, stop it now. And if it's unstable, stop it now. We talked about uh, a well-balanced life. If it's not well-balanced now, and your baby's in your room, and you've already drank in the beer and uh, whiskeys or whatever alcohol you might have had, or even done drugs, at least set up a new life for yourself starting today and accept this baby the way the baby's going to be born and give this baby a, a fresh start with a stable well-balanced household let's go into my contact information enough said with that um, there's really never enough said with that but it's enough for this segment um, it took 26 minutes to, to say what I had to say about this and um, I just want to give credit uh, to my wife Casey uh, she is the one that uh, brought up this subject to me to look into, to bring up to you, and uh, just like the, uh, the uh, domestic violence and addiction subject. Uh, so she is my anchor in helping me decide possibly what my next subject should be. Okay, folks, so my contact information is, uh, my website is www.clearviews.info, that's C-L-E-A-R-V-I-E-S dot I-N-F-O. You can reach me on my phone at 631-599-0218. You can also reach my business number, 844-393-9355. And you can also go to my Facebook page, which is clearviews.info. Now, every time I finish a segment, I go over how you can seek recovery, how you can seek uh, sobriety, and this is how. There are many methods to do it. I usually start with the method that I utilize, but I'm going to start with AA and its 12-step program. AA has a 12-step program. AA's been around since 1936, and um, AA's program has lots of people that go through it. And um, if you haven't tried it, go ahead and try it. You'll see if you like it. I went to two, three, four uh, meetings, and I just felt that I needed to be more active. I needed to be more involved and uh, this is how I created my own methods AA has the 12 steps I have 16 alternative steps both our steps whether it's AA or mine have the same end result hopefully and that is to seek sobriety and live uh, within uh, the sobriety guidelines and have a sober life for the rest of our life and that is from alcohol and or drugs or both uh, combined so uh, my methods are through my videotapes my methods are through my web page, my Facebook page, and uh, a new uh, method that I spoke about, uh, it's, which I'm uh, presently enrolling uh, to educate myself, is to become a addiction recovery coach. Um, I personally feel that is my calling. I think God is letting me know that I need to serve you folks better by um, becoming a coach and to motivate you and uh, let me just uh, explain what I feel a uh, addiction recovery coach uh, job duties would be and that would be for anybody that's in transition between um, possibly coming out of jail and now having to go to uh, recovery uh, meetings uh, possibly uh, in a hospital that needs to be coached uh, these are just two examples of what I feel I need to do and I'd like to motivate the people to continue on the path of sobriety uh, as much as I'd like to motivate you as my audience. I hope to God that every video that I do have leaves such an impact and I know today's video has to leave an impact because if you're not impacted 
or if you're not uh, shocked by what I just went over with FASD, I don't know what I can do uh, in my next video to, to uh, draw your attention because it is such a sad situation and it's such a selfish act on the part of the mother and the mother-to-be. It is totally unacceptable and, uh, and, and the mother needs to adhere to not drinking for the nine months and if the mother is drinking presently stop it right now you can't take away what you've done already but you can stop it and not make it worse so you have my methods and then you have AA's methods and then of course if uh, you are one of those people that uh, for some reason uh, cannot be left at home because uh, you're afraid you might go to the refrigerator and start drinking like I used to be I used to be one of those pe uh, people that I couldn't wait for people to get away because I was like one of my other videos we discuss closet drinker. I thought I had everybody fooled. I would just drink until I was feeling good, if not worse, and I really thought everybody around me didn't know. The people that didn't know are the ones that didn't know me well enough. People at my job wouldn't know because I'm only there eight hours, but people that did know, uh, most importantly my wife and family members, they knew the signs of Ralph, intoxicated Ralph, two different people they know how to tell the difference between the two so if you're one of the people like I used to be although I didn't have to go to treatment um, because it, I relapsed so many times that one day I just hit rock bottom and I knew it was time for me to uh, straighten my life out and here I am sober haven't had a relapse since then uh, thank God and it's uh, been since 2013 so uh, check into one of these rehab centers uh, they have the 30 60 90 day programs uh, they do accept insurances they also take Medicaid now one thing that I learned from a person uh, I don't like to mention names but this person is in Florida and he is a uh, CEO uh, for a, uh, a rehab center or not a, a rehab website and uh, what they do pretty much is they, they uh, funnel out information on centers on where to go and stuff but this particular person forwarded me a number which I called and uh, I found out that if you don't have any insurance you don't have Medicaid that there is still hope there is hope that you can still check into a rehab this particular situation we were able to find uh, a rehab center however the individual uh, that we were hoping to get into the rehab center uh, made it quite clear that they did not want to go uh, into a rehab center and detox 100% that they wanted the doctor to medicate them while they're going from the uh, 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 the drugs and the alcohol in their system uh, while they are withdrawing all that to become 100% detox they wanted to add another drug to kind of counter level that and it doesn't work I've said this many a times it does not work folks you either going to um, conquer or attack sobriety, live sobriety, and not do anything else. You cannot say, okay, well, I'm not going to have beer today, but I'll have a whiskey instead. You can't do that. You need to quit 100% all alcohol, all drugs. It's plain and simple. There is no in-between. If there is an in-between in your life, that sure, if anything, means that you're going to have a relapse. That's all it means. I just want to say hello to my friend up north. I'm glad things are going okay for you. Keep up the good work. Remember, a sober today makes for a better tomorrow. Think about just today and don't think about tomorrow other than knowingly that because what you did today is going to make a better tomorrow. And then tomorrow, go with the same concept. Go day by day. For all my friends that are out there, for my audience that are out there, if you had a relapse, I hate to say it this way, but you need to get up and don't go back to your old abusive ways. Dust your knees, pull yourself up, step back, take a self inventory, and start again. You might have a relapse five, six, seven times like I did. When you hit rock bottom, you'll know. And that's when you need to utilize different methods on recovery, which I've addressed in some of my videos. You have so many different avenues. But I will say this, folks. And whatever you decide to do as far as how you'll achieve um, sobriety and what recovery methods you're going to utilize, I always recommend including your higher power. In my case, that's my God. 
my God created me to be who I am in the beginning of life. Just like with FASD, God created a perfect child for these mothers to be. It is up to me if I carry on that legacy of what was given to me in life or if I'm going to change anything of that. Sometimes going in down the wrong road, sometimes making mistakes. It will happen. That's when you reach out to your higher power, in my case God, and ask for direction, ask for guidance. In the case of a mother who's drinking alcohol, that child is exactly getting what I already have done, which are mistakes and, and, and um, deformities in my own uh, way, which is uh, alcohol, alcohol uh, addiction and or drug addiction. And that mother is actually doing it for them. That mother is playing God with it, her own child. God is giving this mother a child that is perfectly normal, and this mother is taking that away from the child by drinking alcohol and or having drugs. So, include your higher power. If you include your higher power, ask for guidance and direction. All other things come together. I promise you they will. Whether it's AA and the 12-step program, whether it's my methods and my 16 alternative steps, whether it's going to a rehab center, if you ask God for guidance, he will be there. He will guide you. And that's not just in addiction. It's not just in sobriety. It's in everything we do in everyday life. It could be financial. It could be uh, relationship-wise. It could be work-wise. If you go to your higher power, in my case it's God, and ask for direction, direction will be given, and you might not see results right away. That I can guarantee you. But as time goes on, you'll see differences. Folks, when I became sober and I hit rock bottom, uh, in 2013, and here I am today. It took a long time to get to this point, a very long time. As days go by and weeks go by, things get better in my life. I, I, I see improvement, not only with me mentally and physically, I'm seeing improvement in, in everything around me. And uh, what used to be a, a thought that I could never do things, like sit in front of a camera for 45 minutes and talk to myself, what makes me do this and motivates me is hoping that you're on the other side of this camera and you're absorbing the information that I'm giving you. And yes, there will be some videos that I have a sense of humor and then, no, there'll be a video like today where I just don't have a sense of humor because the subject that we talked about is not a laughing matter, nor is any subject that I've talked about. But sometimes I do throw in a couple uh, jokes here and there uh, to kind of smooth or break the ice. but. And in this particular video, we have to concentrate on FASD. We have to concentrate on your recovery, your sobriety, and your irresponsibility if you're drinking while you're pregnant. We need to concentrate on that. And we need to ask you to stop doing that. We need to beg you to stop doing that. The child can't ask you. The child can't beg you. I don't know you. I don't know if who's watching me that's pregnant is drinking or doing drugs. But as a human, I am asking you, put it down, wait the nine months. Hopefully you'll be sober enough that you won't want to go back. But if you do, continue watching my videos. We'll keep going. I'm going to keep trying to help you seek uh, sobriety. That I promise. We'll keep going. Now, we spoke about the different methods. We spoke about the higher power. We spoke about FASD. And... What I do want to mention is that all my videos are on YouTube, they're all on Facebook, they're on Twitter, they're on Google, they're um, on uh, Time to Heal, which is a, a group on Facebook. Uh, also, I just generated a commercial that'll be on Time to Heal, which is also a uh, on Channel 11 in Boys, Idaho. So these are all things um, that you have available to you where you can see things. You can see my videos. I believe this is number 27. They're available. All you need to do is to locate them. And if you want a copy of any one of my videos, by all means, I can put three on a DVD. Private message me at ralph.friedrichs at yahoo.com. That's R-A-L-F dot F-R-I-E-D-R-I-C-H-S at yahoo.com. Or private message me on Facebook, and I'll be more than happy to uh, 
put three videos, you just mentioned the three that you want me to put on there, on the DVD and get them over to you uh, via uh, United States Post Office at no cost. My hope in return for me doing this for you is for you to look at these videos and it's for you to pass on these videos, make copies. Because there are people in your life that are either addicted to drugs or alcohol, are going through recovery, are sober, or need to see these because they need to sober up. I guarantee there are people, and I guarantee you that there's somebody out there, and if it's not a pregnant mother, that you know someone who is pregnant, and you know that someone might be drinking, might be doing drugs, and it's up to you as a messenger from God, because we all are messengers. It is our duty to go out and, and speak for the folks that can't speak. This child can't speak, so if you know a mother is drinking or doing drugs, it is your duty to bring it up to this person or to someone in their family. You're helping this child. You're helping the creation of God. Wouldn't you feel so much better knowing that you helped prevent this? What is this? We're going to recap real quick one more time. I usually like to do it three, four times in case you missed it the first or second time. I gave you the information, my contact information. I'll give it to you one more time when we uh, cease this video. But let me go over the, uh, uh, the information that we went over before. What is FASD? What are those initials stand for? They stand for Fetal Alcohol Spectrum Disorder. Now, what is that? It is an umbrella term describing a range of effects that can occur during individuals whose mother drank alcohol during their pregnancy. Now, I noticed that they hardly ever mention drugs, but I do probably uh, imagine that if you do drugs, it can't be good for the child either. So, why don't you put the alcohol and drugs as one word, alcohol, but know this, that if you're doing drugs, it's not helping or uh, uh, saving the child from any, any one of these things because it's still a drug. Alcohol is a drug too. The term FASD is not intended for the use of clinical diagnosis. Uh, partial FASD falls under the umbrella of FASD. Each year, as many as 40,000 babies, which means there are probably 40,000 irresponsible mothers-to-be out there, that are born with FASD, costing the nation $4 billion. I don't care about the money. It's the effect on the child that we should care about. It's very unfortunate that everything uh, has become about money. Isn't it about the child, folks? Isn't it about what this baby is going to have? Isn't it about what this baby is going to possibly get when I read it to you? Some of those things are Small head, small eye openings, webbing between eyes and nose base, uh, base of the nose, drooping eyelids, failure of eyes to move in the same direction, short upturned nose. Is that about money? Because I'll tell you what, any amount of money can fix what was created by irresponsible mother-to-be. Let's continue. Flattened cheekbone, sunken nasal bridge, flat or absent groove between nose and upper lip, smooth and thin upper lip. Opening a roof of mouth, small upper jaw, low set mouth formed ears. Those are just all facial. Let's get into growth. Small body size and weight, slower than normal physical development. Failure to catch up in growth. Let's go into skeletal deformities. Deformed ribs and sternum, curved spine, caved in chest wall, bent fused webbing, missing fingers or toes. Imagine that. Extra fingers. Abnormal palm creases genital malformations, kidney and urinary defects. Folks, money, that $4 billion can't fix any of this. It can't. It's amazing that the only fixing that we can do is prevention. And how do we prevent this? The answer is very simple. Mothers-to-be, do not drink, do not do drugs while you're pregnant. Be responsible. Be a mother before the child's born. Cradle that mother, I mean, excuse me, cradle that baby in your mind. It is your job to protect. It's your job to raise this child. 
It's your job to set good examples. What kind of example are you setting if you're drinking while you're pregnant? It's not an example. And it is actually an example. It's a bad example. Let's go to the next one. Central nervous system, handicaps. Small brain size, faulty arrangement of brain cells and tissue, mild to severe mental retardation, learning disabilities, poor memory, lack of imagination and curiosity, poor language skills, short attention span, poor coordination, irritability in infancy, hyperactivity in childhood, poor reasoning and judgment skills, sleep and sucking disturbances in infancy. And then we have the last one. <laughs> like those first three categories weren't enough. Behavioral problems, inability to concentrate, social withdrawal. If you have any of these socially, how are you already a handicap? Stubbornness, impulsiveness, anxiety, problems with daily living, psychiatric problems, criminal behavior, chronic unemployment, incomplete education, inappropriate sexual behavior, substance abuse, pure, uh, excuse me, poor parenting skills. That's what these babies will have or end up with. I'll read the last paragraph from the Mayo Clinic, Help for Children with FASD. The above symptoms and conditions can have a lifelong implication for children who are exposed to alcohol in the womb. You're passing it on. That beer is going through you to your baby, that whiskey, that scotch, that whatever, any drugs, it's going right to your baby. Be responsible, stop it. However, there is help for those who are most severely affected by their mother's drinking. There's help. There's not a cure, there's help. Research has shown that FASD children who receive special education and adequate social services are more likely to reach their de developmental and educational potential. That's the key word, potential, than those who do not receive that. Potential, that, that means not everything. That's as far as they can go. Potentially, that's as far as they can go. It's not what God gave them in the first place that you took away when you started drinking and doing drugs during your pregnancy. Eliminate all this by eliminating this or doing this. Eliminate that, eliminate that. Pretty simple. A loving, nurturing, and stable home life without disruptions, harmful relationships, or transient lifestyles has also been shown to benefit children with FASD. Those who live in abusive, unstable, or violent environments are more likely to develop their behavioral problems. Mommy, you've already possibly had the alcohol. We can't change that. Now, here's our action plan that we always speak about. Every person that has addictions has to have an action plan for recovery. My action plan is this. My website, my Facebook, going testifying to people. Those are my action plans on a daily basis. What is your action plan? Let's talk about this. Do you have an abusive relationship? Do you have an unstable life? Are you not a balanced person? Your action plan then would be to get rid of the harmful relationships, uh, get rid of the unstable life, get rid of the violent establishment that you might be living in there. And you will possibly help less behavioral problems by doing that. So your action plan should include exactly this. Number one, no more drinking or drugging while you're pregnant. Or for that fact, ever again, but let's just concentrate on your pregnancy. That's number one. Number two, get rid of any domestic abuse situation in your life. Number three, make your home stable. Number four, Get your life well balanced because your life is the mirror image of what this baby is going to see. Number five, get rid of any violence around your house. And number six is love your child no matter what when the child is born. Love your child. Chances are your child could be born with one of these items on there. Chances are it could have extra fingers. Chances are it could have upper lip problems, eyes in opposite directions, chances are. But you created this and it's up to you and God to work through this and ask God for guidance and how to now live with this child and make this child 
the most happiest child and give this child the most productive life that this child uh, can get from you or from anyone. Stop with the drinking today, August 10th, 2014. I stand here and I beg you to please stop. I'm only asking you nicely, as nicely as I can, to stop the drinking and doing the drugs while you're pregnant. If there's anything I could do to help you, to guide you to the proper phone numbers to help you, if you might need some counseling, call me at 631-599-0218. You can also call me on my business number, which I'm the only person that has access to the uh, voicemail on there. 844-393-9355. Send me a private message on Facebook. Go to my uh, go to your email and send me an email. Ralph.Friedrichs at Yahoo.com. That's R-A-L-F dot F-R-I-E-D-R-I-C-H-S at Yahoo.com. Go to my website at www.clearviews.info. Up, upper right hand corner is a comment section. Leave me a comment. Read the comments from hundreds of people that have left me comments already on that how looking at these videos has helped them with their daily living and how they have gone through sobriety, addiction. It, 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 some of the people explain it like it was a war. Some people explain it like it was the hardest thing in their lives and it really is eliminating or living with an addiction because you're not going to eliminate it. Living with an addiction can be rough. But it's as rough as you allow it to be. Because if you believe here, you can achieve there. You need to believe that you're above this addiction. You need to believe that you can live a sober life. And you need to believe that your child deserves the best from you. We won't have to discuss FASD if we just eliminate the beer, eliminate the alcohol, eliminate drugs. During your pregnancy, it's definitely a no-no. I hope that if you do quit and you move on throughout your pregnancy without any more alcohol and drugs, that maybe there's a chance that at the end of the day, you will not want to go back to it. And if you do, that's okay. You come back. Well, I shouldn't say it's okay. I can deal with that. People can deal with that. You can deal with that. But what you need to do is to keep educating yourself because eventually you might want to consider fighting addiction, living with addiction. Remember, a sober today makes for a better tomorrow. And if you go day by day, 24 hours at a time, living for the day without any type of alcohol uh, and drugs, you will make it for a week. You will make it for two weeks. You'll make it over a year. I know a person that's uh, that I spoke to early this morning, about 2.30 in the morning, that has been over 30 years sober, celebrating an anniversary. I don't know the exact number. I was a little tired, but I, I think it's either 30 or 36 years. But once you reach that plateau, 30 years, can you imagine that? This person is an inspiration to me. She is a fighter like I am. She is a messenger like I am. Her group is on Time to Heal group on Facebook. I urge you to go Time to Heal, it's a group, just go to the search bar type, Time to Heal. Go there. You'll see everything that she is creating and doing. She fights as hard as I fight. There are people that fight as hard as I do. And if we all come together as a community, we can all fight addiction. We can live with addiction. We can educate each other with addiction. How do we stay sober? What are the steps to stay sober? How do we help people? How do we testify to people? My biggest testifying is my own character, my own way of carrying myself, how you are seeing me. That's living proof of sobriety and how it works. Okay, folks, so we're up to 55, 54 minutes now, so I'm going to cut this short. So we addressed FASD for today. I hope you all got a good idea of what it's about. I thank my wife, Casey, again for recommending this. And I just want to tell everybody to please contact me in any which way that you can. If you have any questions you needed some advice, 631-599-0218 or on www.clearviews.info or you can go to Facebook, clearviews.info and you can email me at ralph.friedrichs at yahoo.com. That's 
R-E-L-F-F-R-I-E-D-R-I-C-H-S at yahoo.com. I hope to God we all see each other real soon again. Again, here in the Hamptons, a nice sunny day. That's Hamptons, Long Island. And uh, no matter where you are, I hope you have a great sunny day. But even if it's raining, make it a sunny day inside your own home. And remember, a sober today makes for a better tomorrow. And if you believe here that you can quit drinking and quit doing the drugs, if you believe it here, you can achieve it in your living room, your kitchen, wherever you're looking at me right now. Have a great day. Have a great weekend. And more importantly, have a sober weekend. And God bless you.